My name is Leah Schwinghammer and I'm the lead mentor for Yeti Robotics, which is a high school first robotics competition team. It's a community team based at Central Piedmont Community College. And what I do is basically organize the team, make sure things happen, find mentors, find sponsors, and kids to participate. Well, we don't require any students to have skills coming into the team. If you've got skills like programming or building or machining, that's awesome, but you're not required to have it. We feel that this is an on hands-on, this is a hands-on experience where you can learn any kind of skills you're interested in as far as the robotics teams involved. And a lot of people think robotics, oh, you just have to be a geek and you only have to do technical stuff, and that's not true. Uh, first robotics competition teams run or are supposed to run like a small business. So we need kids that are interested in helping with finances, they want to do public speaking, they want to do outreach, fundraising, who might be interested in um, any kind of creative aspects like the graphic arts, designing t-shirts, designing our banners, designing our posters, our brochures, so any kind of marketing design skills. Um, and then there are the technical skills too, so photography, filmography. The best award or the biggest award you can achieve in FIRST Robotics is a Chairman's Award and teams are required to submit a DVD. So somebody with uh, filming skills or knowing how to edit uh, photos and videos are a skill you need. So that's not necessarily a technical skill you would as associate with building robots, but all those skills go into running a team. We have professional mentors that work with the team, and that's part of my job is to find those people who work with the kids. So we have engineers, we have marketing professionals, we have finance professionals, we've had Toastmasters uh, clubs come in and talk with the teams about um, do the junior leadership for public speaking. Um, we have mechanical engineering uh, professionals who come in and work with the team as well in the design phase and execution. So in, we have professional programmers who come in and work with our team to learn the programming languages we use and actually program the robot for competition. So to me, that's one of the most powerful things about FIRST is you actually are bringing in professionals that the students get to work with side by side in an intense work-like environment. It, does try to mimic a real world situation where you're given a challenge. Basically in, in the technology field, you might come up with an idea and you're given six weeks to build a prototype. And that's what we do. The kids have six weeks to design and build the robot and program. So they're in an intense situation with limited time, resources, money but they have professionals help work them through. That's another thing they do. We've brought in people that do project management to help the kids learn project management skills. How are we gonna get through six weeks of crazy build situation and actually I'm up with a finished robot at the end and not have a pile of parts. So yeah, that's, that's to me one of the most powerful things is working with real professionals. There's been studies done that students that participate in FIRST are twice as likely to go to college. Um, I think it's more than three times as likely to major in engineering or science. They're more than twice as likely to participate in community volunteerism. Um, there's a lot of statistics that show those that kids carry those skills or involvement beyond into their college and professional career that way. Um, and this is across the board. That's why FIRST works really hard to bring in minorities, uh, females, um, children, or young people that are economically disadvantaged to get into the program because they have that hands-on experience to realize they can do it and they get inspired to go on and major in engineering or some kind of a science and go on and do that. Well, I think we see more and more robotics in our everyday life. Most manufacturing facilities now have robotics involved. We have robotic vacuum cleaners. Um, more and more, I think some of the biggest growth is in uh, medical field. Uh, robotics are used in surgeries, in exploratory surgeries or any kind of surgery. 
Um, I was at the dentist not too long ago and I was watching them. They have a 3D CAD. To me, it's like a robot, but they carve your tooth, you know, if you need a replacement tooth. So it's kind of fun to watch them. They design your tooth and they, it's a mechanized robot that <laughs> grinds down a tooth to fit in your mouth. So even in dentistry, you can use stuff like that. I think it's wherever there's a need, people can find a way to automate it. I think the way you look at it is automation. Um, in the last 20 or 30 years, we've lost a lot of industry in the United States. It's moved overseas. That's a big to do politically, obviously, and economically that manufacturing has moved overseas. And one of the ways I think that we'll see manufacturing come back is through automation to become more efficient, more cost effective to do it in the States versus shipping it overseas. I think what's really neat about it, what's very powerful is, again, going back to the hands-on experience. I've had kids, I've told kids, before we get into build season, build season's January, February, we're here 20 hours a week with the kids and they have to be dedicated and usually they are because they get so committed to their project. And I've told the kids going into this or before this, I said, it's gonna be a lot of work, be prepared. It's really hard, it's a lot of work, but at the end you're gonna miss it. And they're like, why would we miss it? We don't, you know. But then come the end of it, they're like, oh no, it's over. <laughs> You know, they miss because it's really kind of fun to watch the camaraderie develop. They're here so much together and we spend every Saturday all day here. We come in at nine in the morning and we're usually here till eight or nine at night. We eat lunch together, we eat dinner together and we have a, it's a real social time. We have, we had at one point hard time getting kids to come in on Friday night to work. So we instituted Junk Food Friday. And it's really funny to watch them. It's really not about the junk food because I had one kid, it, she was really bummed out that she had to leave early. She goes, can't we do junk food Friday early? And I said, well, just take some food with you. And she goes, no, I, it's not, I don't want the food. I want to hang out. So it's kind of fun that they get that opportunity to do that. And that's one of the things that's kind of neat for me about it. As they learn what it's like to work hard and have a neat thing at the end to show off. Well, how to get involved, you can get involved in first team anywhere. There are 40, I wanna say 45, 46 teams across the state of North Carolina and every state of the country and about 16 or 17 countries in the world. So um, locally, there's a team right now, we're a community team, so anybody can join. Uh, there is a team at Philip Berry High School, and there's a team starting at Olympic High School. Those are the only teams right now in the Charlotte area. Um, I believe the teams that are focused at high school, you have to go to that school to join. But you can definitely join if you're there. If you wanted to join our team, you can just contact us. Our website is yetirobotics.org, and there's an email, yetirobotics at gmail.com. So you can just contact us for information. We usually have, in late summer, a recruitment night that you can join then check it out parents are welcome families are welcome to come see what it's all about learn about the season it's an all-year event really we work all year long raising funds getting ready learning sessions we do have learning sessions in the fall getting prepared for the build season where you learn those skills we talked about um, and just come out. We, you, we stop uh, recruiting at the end of September, early October, so you really have to make a commitment by that time. But any time before that, you're welcome to join and sign up. And just come try it out. Mm -hmm.